Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon and today we're doing a home studio tour. Alright, so this is my studio. This is where I work out of and as you guys can see it's not that big of a room It's just a spare bedroom in my house. I'd say it's about a 12 by 12 bedroom So nothing crazy, but this is where it's at now We are going to talk about everything that I can possibly think of in this room all the things on the walls everything else But we're gonna start off with the main area the main desk Which is what I'm assuming most of you are here for now the biggest change, the biggest addition to the studio has been my computer. For the past couple years, I believe since like 2014 when I bought it, I used to run a 2014 MacBook 15 inch, a MacBook Pro, and it was great. And the reason I bought a laptop was because I thought that I was going to be in and out of studios, you know, just being very mobile. But the reality is that I, I just work out of here, whether it's through with clients and in music or now making a lot more YouTube videos. I don't really leave this space much. So I thought, you know what? Let me pick up something that is a little bit more powerful, a lot more ports, because as we know, the, the MacBooks now, they lack severely in the IO department. But I love it. This thing is great. It's a it's a 27 inch iMac, 2019 i9. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put up all the stats here on the screen for anybody who cares about that kind of thing. So there you go. But anyway, I love this computer. It's really, really great. Let's see what else we got here on the main desk. Um, the speakers, they are the Yamaha's HS80s. So the older versions. I got these back in 2000 and I believe it was like 12, 2012. And they have served me, uh, you know, fantastic. I, the expectations definitely surpassed. They sound great. Eight inch woofers, one inch tweeters. Got the other one on that side. And these are, have been my main monitors for, like I said, for the past eight years or so. They are sitting on top of, I can't remember the name of these stands, but the, the main reason I got these, and these, these were a recent purchase, were that was that my old ones, even though they were sturdier and they were wood stands, they were not height adjustable. And technically, these have not been sitting at the optimal listening scenario to create that equilateral triangle. Um, for as long as I've had them. So I was like, you know what? Let me see if, if, if it makes a difference. Let me see if uh, this is any better for me. So I picked up these stands. They're from Amazon. And like I said, I'll link everything down below. But these are really, really sturdy as well. And they are also height adjustable. So that's a plus. Let's see. Talking about the actual desk, this is a really, really huge desk that I got from Ikea. Now, I don't think they make this anymore. Back when I picked it up, again, it was like six years ago. It was called the Gallant. And at once upon a time, I used to fit everything on this desk. So we had my 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 uh, keyboard, MIDI keyboard. We had my machine. We had my laptop on its stand. I've since moved it into a different rig, which we'll talk about in a minute. But basically, um, they've discontinued this desk. They now sell a similar version called the Beckant at IKEA. It has rounded corners, but anyway. It's just, it's the perfect desk for something like this. Eventually in the future, maybe I'll upgrade to something like a, an Argosy Helios, I believe. Like one of those sit-stand desks with, you know, proper stations for, it's a proper audio production station. But for now, it works amazing. Let's see what else we got on here. Moving over, we have a little iPad mini that I picked up. And basically I use this for like video um, planning, scheduling, email just all that basic stuff serves its purpose right behind it we have two modules that i used to have on a rack that i've since taken out the bottom one is the most important one that is a um what are they called um it's basically a studio grade search protector and i plug all of my devices into here and the reason being is Two purposes. Number one, obviously, it's a surge protector. If, if something were to happen, electricity or lightning strikes, it protects all your gear. But number two, it also uh, provides a like a filter for your um, the electricity running in the house, so it doesn't interfere with your recordings. So that's really really important. 
and power conditioner that's what it's called and then the top one it's it's really not supposed to be here this is a light switch or pretty much switches for lights but what i've done because i've gotten really lazy over the years is i hate going to the back of these speakers turning them on so what i've done is i've i've plugged them all into each individual switches and then plug this into the power conditioner so when i come into the studio i press this button that turns everything on then i turn this on to power on speaker one speaker two speaker three which we'll talk about in a minute um and then we have the uh salt lamp so there you go and then the backlights if you can see them back there so is this necessary absolutely not is it really cool and does it make me feel like i'm in a in the cockpit of a, some sort of space station absolutely and i love it speaking of the space station this is a studio sign up here which was made it was hand drawn by an artist that i worked with a while back it looks amazing i've put it on little hooks i drilled two holes put it on little hooks and then um hung it up there on that rod but i i love it i i love it speaking of that third speaker this is a i believe is discontinued now but it's pretty much an oratone um like knockoff it's a behringer baritone and i use it to reference mixes it's a mono speaker nothing crazy very mid-range heavy but it's it's great for that kind of thing to reference your mixes let's see what else we got here a bunch of knickknacks just kind of laying around we have some hand lotion stress-free hand lotion that my fiance got me from bath and body works we have a little shaker we have um some controls we have my hard drives i've talked about these before these are a 500 gigabyte ssd that i use for sessions and then a two terabyte traditional drive that i use for samples and one shots and stuff like that in the back if you can see there i have another two terabyte traditional drive that i use for pretty much media uh creative stuff so all my youtube video material that goes there and then both of these three drives they get backed up into my five terabyte desktop drive through a software called carbon copy cloner which i've done a review on so i'll make sure to link that up top and that's pretty much that's pretty much it on my desk there's a salt lamp there uh nope i'm missing a couple things let's see so this little device is called the stream deck mini from elgato basically what this is this is a macro controller and you can it, it has six empty buttons and you can map this to do whatever pretty much whatever you want on your computer so if you take a look on the bottom left i have a little button here that tells me the cpu um, performance on my computer so right now it's only using one percent of the cpu um but then you, like i said you can put whatever you want on here so if i press this button and then i press this one it brings up itunes so my apple music library and i can control the music from here um if i press this button and like you can see you can nest different actions within those buttons i can bring up studio one obs all the different adobe applications but you could also do that with folders so for example i can press this one here and let's go to music let's go to beats and finished and that'll bring up that folder which i showed you guys in i believe it was a video or two ago so basically all the beats that i've made over the years um press another one work in progress uh that didn't work <laughs> but it's supposed to bring up another one maybe it's not mapped right but I, I love this thing i i love it and also of course you could also use it for live streaming if you want to bring in different elements or whatever the case might be um before we move on to the audio interface let's talk about the lights in this studio all throughout i have philips hue so i have a backlight here which kind of splashes color onto the back for when i'm recording videos there is one there there is one there the studio strip and then one up top right now it's currently white but basically these are remote controlled smart lights that make it really really easy for me to pretty much switch between scenes so you can set you can group different lights uh, decide what color you want them to be decide if you want them to turn on or off and then group those into scenes so i have one called fire up the space station <laughs> and it turns everything in here purple and blue which is how i like to work whenever i'm creating then i can say something like um you know video lighting and it'll turn those off turn the backsplash on 
and turn my key light on, which we'll also talk about in a minute. And it just makes things really, really easy, especially because I have my studio set up in a way where everything stays where it's at, right? The whole purpose of this studio for me was to create a space not only inspired me, but also allowed me to get straight to work with little to no friction. And that's why, you know, they're, they're not cheap, but that's why I invested in them because they make me getting to work a lot quicker and I love it. So let's see. All right. Now that's pretty much a lot of what I have here. Uh, the peripherals. This is a, you know, a magic keyboard two that came with the iMac. Um, the mouse pad in this thing here. I don't really know what company they're from. They're like a, they're called the gaming master something. It's this logo. If you guys know what that is super solid. Uh, they do discolor a little after a while. Like if you can maybe see there. But it's cool. I mean, that's what they're for, right? You use them. This here, I cannot recommend this mouse enough. This is called the Logitech MX Master 2. I believe now they have a third version. But listen, guys, let me tell you something. If you want to up your productivity, your efficiency, normally I wouldn't recommend like mouses but let me tell you this thing is great not only do you have your right and uh, left and right click you know buttons here you also get one in the middle this wheel you can adjust it from like a ratcheting kind of thing to free scroll uh you, you can also click on it you have a, a um a button here on the thumb rest you have a side scroll wheel back and forth buttons here and all of these are customizable via the app or the software to whatever you want the best part is that you can customize them per application. So basically what I do is I have different settings for Studio One. I have different settings for my um, editing software. I have different settings for my web browser. So for example, when I'm in Studio One, I have this thumb button mapped to delete simply because that means I don't have to take my fingers off the mouse to delete something. This middle button, I have it mapped to enter, which in Studio One just brings the play bar all the way to the beginning. So if I need to hear the beat from the beginning, I just press this. And if I need to delete something, I just press this. I can scroll from the timeline left and right with this here. And it just makes things super, super, super uh, productive and, and efficient. So I cannot recommend this enough. It's a little pricey for a mouse. I will warn you. It's about like 80 bucks or so, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, moving on. What do we have here? We have my audio interface. This is the Apollo Twin MK2. I used to have the MK1. I sold it on eBay, picked this up. Um, I wouldn't say there's a huge difference between the one and the two. The color, obviously, you now you have like a space gray, dark gray, charcoal gray kind of thing going on. Um, with the version two, you do get a talk back. I don't know if you guys can see there. So I can talk to artists via this microphone whenever they're like tracking, which is kind of cool. Um, the preamps are a little better than the one, but like I said, it's not that big of a difference. But that's that's that. The cable here, we have my headphones of choice. These are the headphones that I use for referencing, for mixing. These are the Audio-Technica's ATH M50Xs. Fantastic headphones. I do have a couple other um, up top there that I don't use as often. On the right, we have the KRK KNS 8400s. I mainly use those for tracking because they have great uh, noise isolation. Um, I don't know how or the technology that's in there, but it pretty much like cups your ear perfectly and you don't hear much of what's going on, uh, which is great. The other ones on the left are the Bear Dynamics DT990 Pros, which are open back, but I don't really use those. I think I might sell those. Um, especially now that I'm switching to letting other people pretty much into my process. I don't want to be mixing music anymore. I just want to produce, let other people do things that they're good at. So I might get rid of those, but we'll talk about this whole rig in a minute. Let me see if I missed anything else on this side. Um, I think that's it. Just, you know, cables at the bottom. I've organized them in a way that it doesn't really, <laughs> we got my dogs in the background. I've organized them in a way that don't bother me too much. I'm not like a super organizational freak, but I do like things tidy. But okay, let's talk about this second rig here. This is my new beat making rig. And the only reason I have this is because I started making YouTube videos. Now, like I said before, I used to have everything on my desk and it fit and it was great. Didn't have a complaint. 
The problem arose whenever I started to record YouTube videos. Now, specifically the beat making videos. I am a fan of, um, I used to, I'm a fan of like those videos where you get isolation into the different things that you're doing, which is what I kind of aim my videos to be. So I wanted to record the beat pad by itself. I wanted to record the keyboard by itself. I wanted you guys to see what I was doing, but that required me to pretty much put a camera on each of those devices. And I was like, you know what, let's do it. I used to have an overhead rig here. So in my older beat making videos, you guys probably have seen that before. Um, and I did that, but the problem, and this is something that I did not know because I am a music producer before anything else, is that <laughs> as you introduce more sources, more cameras, the work gets a lot crazier uh, in the editing process. So I was like, you know what? I want to create a stackable option, something like what you see here now, where I can just use one camera and it'll make it easier for me. But the problem is I couldn't do that over here. So I decided to create this whole second area. And now what happens is this area here is for beat making and video recording. And then this area where I have the nice 5K display and you know the nice speakers, this is for video editing and music uh, beat mixing. So basically, let's talk about how I made this, how I set this up. On the left hand side, the main part of this, you'll see it run all the way up top. That is a C stand. They're mainly used for lighting that you can attach like different things at the end here, different lights. I use it as an overhead rig. So at the top, you'll see that I have a GoPro. This is a GoPro 5 and I've pretty much, you know, jerry rig this in a, this contraption. We have a grip head, a spigot, a ball head, and then finally the GoPro, which records both of these at the same time. So that works. Then let's see. I wanted to have a screen on here, so what I did was, that screen was the one that I had originally on my main area, but I, I bought one of those VESA arms, and I attached it, and it worked out perfectly because the the diameter of this thing here fit the pole perfectly, so it, it, everything was great. I attached it, and we got a screen. Then I had a pretty much a spare keyboard. This is one from ProLine. I, I believe I picked it up at Guitar Center a while back, but then I put my keyboard on it and I used to have my machine on here and everything was gravy, but then it, it died. So recently I got this from PreSonus. This is the item. And let me tell you, I will make a full fledged review on it. I have a couple video ideas actually, but I am in love with this thing. And, and basically this is the way that I'll put it to you. If you use Studio One and you like the linear workflow of Studio One, this is the beat pad for you no brainer hands down because not only is it a great beat pad with pads that are comparable to the machine they feel just as good as a machine but it's also a full-blown DAW controller so I no longer even have to touch my mouse and keyboard now which was another problem I, I needed when I had the machine I needed a keyboard and my, my a mouse I'm using a trackpad now but th this is space real estate that I did not have but with this here, I can do everything. It's transport controls, play, pause, record, uh, enable the, the click track. I can, you know, mess with the editor, duplicate. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do a full review on this, but if you, like I said, if you like Studio One, if you like the way that Studio One works, this is the beat pad for you. And as you can see, I'm, I have it sitting on the box because it's so tiny, it doesn't even fit into these support brackets, these support beams for the, the keyboard stand. Now, speak, uh, speaking of the keyboard stand, this is another thing that I need to switch soon because I'm not a fan of it. Um, if you guys have one of these, then you're familiar with the, the mechanism of how it works. Basically, with these X-style stands, the width of these support beams, they will shorten or uh, lengthen. Is that a word? Yeah, right? <laughs> they, pretty much, they will change depending on whether you have this uh, higher or lower, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you how you look at it. What I am looking for is a tabletop style keyboard stand where you can raise it and lower it and these two beams, the distance between them will not change. I have one in mind, it's called the K&M, K&M Omega stand I believe, they're a German company if I'm not mistaken, and it looks great and you can add a second tier or a third tier, so I'm looking into that soon, that is the next addition to the studio. But pretty much, that is the second rig. I love it. And the cool thing about having this little pole here is that you can attach whatever you want to it with 
like clamps. So if you take a look, I have this friction arm with a clamp attached to it and then a light and that light is pointing towards the wall, balancing the light onto me. And you know, and I'm not a photographer or a videographer or anything like that, but I believe that's called a fill light, which kind of fills the left side of my face. Um, but yeah. And then for the microphone, I have this Rode boom arm that I used to use whenever I recorded videos from here. You guys used to sit over there and then it would kind of just extend this way. Now I have it set to where it's an overhead kind of rig situation. And then I have an old microphone. This is, a, this is a, a pencil condenser. I might get a new one soon, but for now it sounds good. So no reason to change that. But that's, that's where I sit now if I want to record videos. And pretty much I see you guys from here. That's my camera. That is a Panasonic Lumix G85 with a little monitor at the top so I can see myself. And you guys see me from this angle, just a little bit more zoomed in. And the cool thing too about this little rig is that not only did it give me a space to, a separate space to make beats, but it also gave me a nice little backdrop that you guys can look at. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, moving on over, we have a rack. This rack I used to have under my desk, but it was kind of annoying because I couldn't really stretch out my feet. Very first world problems but I moved it over here. I don't really use it as much anymore, simply because a lot of what I use isn't really hardware. Um, I feel like it'd be more useful for, for maybe like a mixing engineer that has, or that's running a hybrid kind of system. But right now what it has on it is an 11 rack by Avid, and it's a pretty much a guitar amp simulator. So I can plug in my guitar, run through the, the presets. Um, think of it like a hardware plugin for guitars, just run through different presets. So I can get like, you know, very, very bluesy guitar tones to like heavy metal. I want to maybe pick up uh, the Kemper, which is like the bigger brother to this a different company, but more capable version of this later on down the road. But for now it works. And like I said, I, I don't really use it much. Maybe later down when I get something like um, an Apollo 8, like the rack version of it, maybe another power conditioner, maybe I'll, I'll put it to more use. But for now, it's just kind of sitting there. I don't know what I'll do with it. But okay, moving on, you guys already saw my camera. Like I said, this is the Panasonic Lumix G85. And it has a, look at this. It has this, this little thing where I can put in my phone so I can slide my phone in there. It's kind of like a teleprompter. And, it, and it's really, really useful because I can put bullet points of what I want to talk about. And that way I don't forget, especially when I'm doing maybe like reviews or maybe like longer videos that require a lot of information. That is really, really useful. The tripod is from a company called, I believe it's K, K and F, K and F concept. Really sturdy. Moving on. We have a whiteboard. You have to have a whiteboard. Whiteboards are essential. Uh, my guitar stand, which is actually very lonely, very empty. I just have two guitars on there. I have a acoustic guitar that was actually gifted to me almost 12 years ago or so. Still kicking. And then a Gibson Les Paul 2013, I believe, studio. The Black Widow, that's my baby. I love her. I still need to get, I, I need to change the strings right now. They're not at the best. But okay, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, moving around the room. This is my main light, or as it's often referred to as a key light. This is from a company called Newer. I used to have another one, but I just bought this recently. So basically the lights in here, this is a little softbox diffuser thing. And then I run it through another big diffuser thing to just kind of soften it up, make it look really, really nice. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, check this out. This I built, it's a, it's a mobile acoustic wall. So I, I can't move it right now because it's behind a couple things, but it's pretty much on casters, on wheels. And if I ever need to record something, it's kind of like a gobo. I can move it around and create, you know, a better scenario for recording whatever. I've built this out of a bunch of Home Depot parts. I got this from another channel called DSLR Video Shooter. I'm going to link them down below. I'm going to link that video down below. But this thing is amazing. This is just a two by four cut in half, six foot, so like three foot. Um, I drilled in one of those like, I don't know even know what those are called, with some um, hooks, some carabiners, and then just wrapped one of those vocal booth acoustic blankets all around and you can raise it up or down. It is amazing. Speaking of those vocal booth blankets, that's what I have hanging there and hanging in the back. There's two of them actually. 
and I pretty much put an Ikea rod on the wall. That's how they're hanging. But it, they provide fantastic, um, uh, what are they called, uh, absorption. Not soundproofing. That doesn't really happen unless you get a whole room built, custom made. But absorption, they sound really, really great. This room is completely almost dead, which is great. Now behind this little blanket or curtain, I have a closet full of storage. So guitar cases... Uh, you can see boxes there for different products. This is just a regular closet. And I used to have the doors on it, but I got tired of having to pretty much fight my way in there whenever I needed to get something. So I just took them out. I mean, the curtain kind of covers it up anyway. So that's kind of cool. Okay, moving on. We have just some... Oh, the things on the wall. So we have pretty much the Avengers in comic book form. This is the Holsty Manifesto, which I absolutely love. When I read it and found out about it, I just had to get one for the studio. You guys can pause that and read it if you like, or Google it. But it pretty much tells you to do what you love to do. On this side, we have, let's see, a Spider-Man poster that was also a gift. The same artist that did the studio sign did this one, Positive Vibes. Um, kind of like in a cosmic theme. Uh, I don't know if you guys can read that, but it says music is what feelings sound like. That was gifted to me by my fiance. Um, a little stormtrooper in a suit. And then we have uh, Darth Vader in a suit back there. We have a, a guitar. And then the same artist who did those two pieces did this one. And it's called Work Harder. I want to redo it though. Call it and, you know, retitle it Work Smarter with a D. Kind of corny, but a combination of work harder and smarter. But that's where it's at. As far as the panels on the wall, they're from Oralex. I don't recommend Oralex simply because... I mean, they're great, don't get me wrong, but they're hella expensive. I think you can definitely get the same uh, results with something cheaper. Especially if you go with something like the Vocal Booth Acoustic Blankets. They sound just as good. The bass straps on the walls, they're also from Oralex. And I think, uh, I think I'm think i gonna maybe get into more detail of how I put them up because I've made a bunch of mistakes throughout the years of how I put these up on the wall. They've fallen before, um, but yeah, they're up now and they're not going anywhere. So maybe I'll make a video about that. The couch, which is more of a futon, I got this from like rooms to go, just a basic futon that I've had for years. This is uh, one of these Amazon basic stools that I mainly use for when I have people over and they want to kind of go up near to see what I'm doing. Uh, I also use it for a guitar because it, since it doesn't have the little the armrests, it lets me play guitar a little bit better. A little studio blanket, gift from my mom. Really, really warm and soft. My main chair is from Serta. They make mattresses, but it's really, really comfortable. And let's see, am I missing anything? I don't, I don't think so. That's my entire studio. This is where I work. This is where pretty much I make music with clients. This is where I make beats. This is where I record YouTube videos. And if you'll notice, the main difference between this and maybe like my earlier studios or maybe another producer studio is that this is a hybrid between a YouTube recording set and a full functional production studio. And I've had to do that, obviously, because I have limited space. Later down the road, I would love to ideally split these into two, where I have pretty much a production studio, where I can have artists come and just be creative, and then a YouTube set, which is still kind of a, you know, a functional production studio, but just for recording videos. But for now, I've had to mix both of them together. Nothing crazy. Like I said, this is a spare bedroom in my house, but it works. It works, and I love it. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this home studio tour. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.